Nestled in the mountains of Utah, we're on the sprawling campus of Brigham Young University, 4,500 feet above sea level for the third episode of WCC All Access. I'm Ezra Broder. And I'm Sammy O'Brien. And coming up, the first WCC championships of the season are in the books. Plus, take a listen to this. I'm begging, baby, please have mercy on me. He's not just a singer, he also runs with one of the best cross country teams in the nation. And what's it like to play with LeBron James? We catch up with a WCC Hoops alum who shared the court with the King this preseason. But first, basketball is officially here. The season starts on November 6th, and in the WCC, the eighth annual tip-off event got things started in mid-October. Take a look at the sights and scenes from the Orleans Arena. Welcome back to the Orleans Arena, site of the 2018 West Coast Conference Men's Basketball Media Day. He's had a bum ankle for like a couple of years now. So he's, he's been in the training room more than the players have been. So he kind of walks around like this with one, <laughs> with one ankle. Last year I mentioned to you, I said, watching Shannon play basketball is kind of like watching a movie car chase. It looks out of control. <laughs> what? Oh yeah! <laughs> so, we so we won. You were there in Pepperdine in the late 90s, when I was in high school. Now you're here again. What, does anything feel different or is it like, oh, I've been here before? Outside the, of the cost of real estate. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ruffello, Franco, Vincenzo, and Giacomo. I love it. So tell, like the middle tell me about dinner at the Ferrari. Growing up, it was like scrapping. During the event in Las Vegas, the conference revealed the preseason polls and all conference teams as voted on by the head coaches. Here's Sammy with more. It's time to announce the West Coast Conference preseason poll as voted on by the head coaches. The defending WCC champion Gonzaga Bulldogs take the top spot in unanimous fashion. In second, St. Mary's College with 68 total points and just behind in third, BYU one point shy. In fourth, San Francisco and rounding out the top five, San Diego. And for the WCC preseason all-conference men's basketball team, from BYU, Yoli Childs, the Cougars junior forward, has made his mark on the BYU record books in just two short years. From Gonzaga, Josh Perkins, the Bulldogs senior guard, averaged 12.3 points and 5.3 assists per game last season. And the rest of the team is as follows. From Gonzaga, sophomore Zach Norvell Jr., junior Rui Hachimura, and Killian Tilly. From St. Mary's, Jordan Ford. From LMU, James Bateman. From Santa Clara, KJ Fagan. From San Francisco, Frankie Ferrari. And from San Diego, Isaiah Pinero. Just one year removed from setting the WCC record for wins in a season with 17, Gonzaga was voted as favorite to repeat as West Coast Conference women's basketball champions. The Gales picked to finish second in the conference with 73 points, followed by BYU in third with 66 points and the final first place vote. LMU slated to finish fourth, and San Diego rounding out the top five. And for the WCC preseason all-conference women's basketball team, from BYU, Brenna Chase. The Cougars junior guard is coming off an all-WCC first-team season, leading the conference in three-point field goals and third in steals. From Pepperdine, Yasmin Robinson Baycoat, the Wave senior forward who is already a two-time all-conference first-team veteran, finished last year third in the WCC in scoring and eighth in rebounding. The rest of the team is as follows from BYU, Sarah Hampson, from St. Mary's, Sydney Raggio, from St. Mary's, Megan McKay, from San Diego, Maya Pace, from LMU, Gabby Green, and from Gonzaga, Laura Stockton, Chandler Smith, and Zykira Rice. The trip to Vegas wasn't all business. Some of the coaches got to experience Sin City in a way that very few do, like San Diego's Sam Scholl. Take a look. Hey guys, we're out here on Fremont Street. Isaiah Pinero with first year head coach Sam Scholl. <laughs> He's about to go zip lining, so how are you feeling? You know, a little bit nervous, but we got some experience from our, you know, our summer trip to yeah. Costa Rica. But this one's going to be a little different because we're going head first. So, yeah. in the great city of Las Vegas, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Hope to see you on the other side. Yeah, um, I hope so too. Oh, oh, dude. 
So coach, you made it. <laughs> Just got done uh, off the slot, Zilla. How you feeling? It was fun. It was fun. It was great to kind of see Vegas through a different uh, kind of a bird's eye view. So yeah. it was a really, really good time. Yeah. Really good time. I mean, you're pretty high up there. You're going kind of fast. Uh, were you nervous while you were riding it? A little bit at the beginning, like the first like three seconds. You're like, I'm like, all right, this is a little, <laughs> this is a little crazy. But but after that, you can, you know, you get yeah. more comfortable and you get to enjoy. Like the, the sights and people watch and everything, yeah. so it was a lot of fun. It's time to take a break. When we come back, Sammy takes us down the coast with a look at news and notes from around the country. And he's a pretty good runner, but may be an even better singer. Sammy introduces us to the vocal talents of Kramer Morton, up next. WCC All Access is brought to you in part by Nike. From the classroom to the court. 10 exceptional schools across the West Coast. Since 2010, 48 postseason wins, 12 academic All-Americans. Pop the three, how do you like that? One final four appearance. It's more than just a game. Students are the heart of BYU because we believe learning should not just be informative, it should be inspiring. We're back on WCC All Access from Provo. I'm Sammy O'Brien. It's time to go down the coast and see what's making headlines around the conference. The WCC is hosting the first and second rounds of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament in March. The games will be played on Friday, March 22nd and Sunday, March 24th at the SAP Center in San Jose. The WCC previously hosted March Madness games there in 2013 and will again in 2021 Tickets are now on sale on Ticketmaster. There's another Hall of Famer in the WCC. Portland's Tiffany Milbritt is now a member of the National Soccer Hall of Fame. The Portland Pilot was one of four new inductees. Milbritt is the second leading goal scorer and fourth all-time in assists in Portland history. She won a gold medal at the 1996 Olympics and was part of that famous team that won the 1999 World Cup. Speaking of national champions, one Gonzaga tennis player can add that title to her resume. Sophie Whittle won the ITA Riviera All-American Championship in October. The senior is the first Zag to win an ITA national title and qualifies for the Oracle ITA Fall National Championships this month. It's a good month to be a Zag. Josh Perkins is one of 20 point guards in the country to be named to the Bob Cousy Award watch list. The award is given to the top Division I point guard in the country. He averaged over 12 points and five assists per game last season, leading Gonzaga to 32 wins. And more WCC athletes on national award watch lists. Pepperdine's Hira Naveed is on the Annika award watch list, which goes to the best women's golfer in the country. In four tournaments this fall, Naveed won twice and finished no worse than seventh in the other two. 2017 was the best season ever in WCC cross country with three teams posting podium finishes at nationals. And if the WCC championships are any indication, this season might just be as special. 
Take a look at the highlights from this year's race right here at the East Bay Golf Course. And Utah's majestic Wasatch Mountains provide the background today for the 2018 West Coast Conference Cross Country Championships. And we are off in Provo, Utah. I just wanted, I wanted to win a conference championship. And that 5K with 1K to go, they were yelling at me, do it for Jack, which is my baby. So I was like, okay, I got to do it for him. And I just gave it my all. Look at young Cougars. I mean, we knew Portland was going to come in and give us a good race, and I'm just really proud of the girls that they put it together. They can perform under pressure, so that's good, but we still have some work to do, and we have three weeks till NCAA, so we're just going to continue to get a little better. We are underway at the 2018 West Coast Conference Men's Cross Country Championship. A lot of training has gone into this. Um, you know, this hasn't been necessarily a target, but it's uh, been a focus as like a stepping stone on you know, just kind of assessing where we're at. This was an amazing venue, you know, and there's a ton of, just a huge crowd. And you really have to, like, let that excite you. And this is my fourth time. It's the last time I had them succeed for me. So it was really like, let's just enjoy this moment and let the energy pump me up. And the BYU energy is always huge. First off, congrats on the Thank win. You. This yeah, one being the fourth straight WCC title for the Cougars. What's special about this team? Well, it's a good group of guys who've just worked together, sacrificed a lot, worked really hard over the summertime, and have have some uh, big, audacious goals as they uh, go into the season. And this was one of them, certainly, to win the conference meet, especially when you're hosting it here on this beautiful course at home. Uh, love the fact that we had some great competition out there, certainly Portland. Portland is uh, ranked number three in the country, and they brought their top guy here today, and he showed what they're capable of doing. But I think my guys ran the rate, kind of race that they wanted to do, uh, kind of a chill and kill, and I was impressed by the way that they were able to kind of ratchet the pace up. So the Cougars once again end the year on a high note, and sophomore Kramer Morton is used to that. In fact, a lot of his time is spent hitting those high notes. Take a listen. Oh, 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 oh. BYU junior Kramer Morton is already a two-time WCC champion, but when he's not running for the number two cross-country team in the nation, he's using those lungs to serenade his fans. So Kramer, first off, how did you get started singing? In our church, we had a celebration when I was like 13 years old. For it, they had tryouts for like a solo number. And at that time, I didn't do any singing. I did a lot of uh, vocal impersonations, kind of as a joke, entertainment. My mom, kind of before then, Talked to me about actually trying to do it normal, kind of see how it would sound if I actually sang normal. I got in the part. That's kind of what segued it into all of the singing that I've been able to do since. My pride is all I got. I'm begging, baby, please have mercy on me. Take it easy on my heart, even though you don't mean to hurt me. You won the Mr. BYU talent competition just last year here on campus. So tell me, how did you get involved in the competition and how did you end up winning? I actually got a text from a guy who I raced against in high school. He's like, hey, we're doing this BYU's Got Talent. Would you be able to come out and sing for it? They had a couple people from some of the vocal groups at BYU, so I was a little bit nervous going up against like people like that. I really not taking voice lessons. That worked out for me. Ended up winning, it was cool. Ripping all the skin from off my bones. I'm from bed to sacrifice my life. I will gladly do it twice. Oh, please have mercy on me. You mentioned you've been singing in some weddings recently, and your teammate Roy Linkletter, he got married recently. What did he have you sing in the wedding? Uh, song Perfect by Ed Sheeran. And I knew I wanted Kramer to be a part of my wedding. He was already going to be a groomsman. And then one of the times he was talking, he was like, no, like, I really want to have you sing at my wedding when I get married. I knew Kramer would do it. There's, there, I've never heard Kramer say no to an opportunity to sing. He nailed it. It's definitely going to be a special thing in our friendship. Would you be there, mercy, mercy? And that lung capacity, the ability to run multiple miles and sing in the same day, how do you do it? The running definitely helps with being able to hold notes and um, have better breath control. I remember one time I actually had a performance where I had a meet that same weekend 
it was on the same day as the performance I had, and I was performing at three different times in the day, and I was racing at three different times in the day. So I would perform a few numbers, I got in the car, I drove down to the meet, I ran the two mile, came back home to the place, performed two more songs, drove back. I think at that point, it's like, okay, I've gotta like keep these a little separate. I'm keeping it pretty down low while I'm running still, because I don't want it to get in the way of running. I really want to use all the eligibility I've got while I have it. I'd say his singing ability is something that makes him very unique. Um, there's a lot of good runners, and he's a great runner, um, but there's not a lot of people that can sing the way he can sing. And when we come back, we take a look at some of the best tweets and posts from around the conference. And what's it like to play with LeBron? Just ask Jonathan Williams. We hear from the former Zag when we return. From the shores of the Pacific to the mountains of Utah, in the classroom, in the community, and on the fields of play, we give back. We lead by example. We represent. Let's take a look at some of the best moments on social media from across the conference. Sometimes, one word says it all. In this case, it's France. Portland alum Megan Rapino told her 441,000 Twitter followers that the U.S. women's national team qualified for next year's World Cup in France with that simple word. He's one of the best golfers on one of the best teams in the country. Pepperdine's Clay Fagler won his third tournament in the last nine months after his first place finish at the Royal Oaks Intercollegiate. The junior is one win shy of tying the school's career record of four. And why not learn from the best in your own backyard? The USF women's hoops team hung out with fellow Bay Area resident and eight time NBA champion, Steve Kerr. He has three rings as the Warriors head coach and five as a player with the Bulls and Spurs. And oh, by the way, his son Nick played basketball at USD. We're back on the BYU campus for this month's episode of WCC All Access. I'm Ezra Broder. Matthew Della Vadova is the only WCC hoops player to do it. What is it? Play with LeBron James. That is, of course, until now. Former Zag Jonathan Williams played with the King during Lakers training camp. Let's go next level with J3. It's been an experience uh, playing one of the greatest players in the world. LeBron James, it's just his presence, everything about him, just, just, just a crazy to be around him. And, uh, he's a great, great guy on and off the court, playing with a bunch of great guys, uh, great veterans such as Rondo, Lance, and JaVale, just learning a lot from them guys and just taking it all in one day at a time. I take a ton of pride in that because, I mean, that's why I make my, my name known is on the defense end, uh, crashing to the glass and being able to switch one through five, guarding every position on the court. And that's what this team needs, and that's what I'm able to do. Ask any coach. It all comes down to wins and losses. And in 2009, BYU head coach Dave Rose had the biggest win of his life against cancer. And that's why when he won the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge this year, he knew exactly where the prize money was going. When my wife, actually, Cheryl, discovered the, the, the Cancer Research Center here on campus, walked through a couple of the labs, met some of the professors, met the students, and she basically came home and said, next year, this is what we're gonna do. And so we did it one year, I think we were in the t top 16 or maybe the final eight, and she wanted to do it again this next year. And I said, listen, I, I, I'm not really interested in you know, finishing second or third or fourth. I said, if we're gonna do it, let's really figure out a way that we can win the thing. It had way more to do with, with her and her organization and her, 
involvement and challenging people. I mean, the, the conference helped us tremendously at the, at the WCC tournament. To me, I, I, I love the $100,000, but I just love the fact that we won because <laughs> that's kind of what the, if you get in a contest, that's what you want to do is try to win it. It'll fund the summer fellowships for a short period of time, but hopefully we can continue to build that endowment to where it can fund a year-round student. You get one student 365 days a year trying to figure out some way to advance the cure to cancer. I think that's a good thing. If you can get 10, that's even better. So we'll start with one as far as our family is concerned. And I'm really, uh, we we're both, Cheryl and I were both really uh, kind of taken back by the, the gesture of the, the Simmons Center to actually create an endowment, endowed scholarship in our family's name. And so, well, it, I, I've just said we'll honor it and we'll do the best we can to build that into something that uh, the school can really use, but something our family can be really proud of. One more block to go. Coming up, Sammy tells us what to look out for over the next few weeks. And we know them all as players and coaches on the basketball court, but how well do we really know them? Get a glimpse of the other side of WCC Hoopsters after this break. From the classroom to the court, 10 exceptional schools across the West Coast. Since 2010, 48 postseason wins, 12 academic All-Americans. Pop the three, how do you like that? One final four appearance. It's more than just a game. And here's what to watch for over the next few weeks. It's tournament time. The NCAA Cross Country Championships are on November 17th in Madison, Wisconsin. Expect to see plenty of WCC representation in both men's and women's races. On the hardwood, the third ranked Gonzaga men play in the Maui Invitational starting on November 19th. All three games will be televised on the ESPN networks. That same weekend, the Santa Clara men and the Gonzaga women play in the Vancouver Showcase. The Zags take on the defending national champs, Notre Dame. And finally, book your tickets to Minneapolis for the NCAA Volleyball Championship in mid-December. Top-ranked BYU is a favorite to win the title. Welcome back to WCC All Access, I'm Sammy O'Brien. Well, last year we told you about Jordan Ford's other sport, chess. We showed you J3's love of comic books and we showed you what goes into Roberto Galanot's hair. What don't we know about this year's basketball stars? Take a look. I won a beauty pageant and also won Miss Congeniality at the beauty pageant. What? <laughs> no. Growing up, I was like obsessed with whales. I wanted to be a I wanted to be a whale trainer at SeaWorld. Probably until I was about 12 or 13 years old. I used to do like presentations. I'm a leap year baby, so technically I'm only five years old. Um, so my next birthday would be in two years from now. I make a good banana bread. That's what people won't know. Whoa. Yeah. You've been holding out. I know, I need to, I, mean, I don't have no kitchen you know, I in the kitchen. door. Just let me know, Coach. Just, just let me know. I love gardening. Um, one of my favorite things to do uh, is to go home and not be around any people and hang out in my raspberries and blueberries with my fruits and vegetables and my dogs. The average person may not know that uh, I was a two-time state chess champion uh, when I was a kid in kindergarten and second grade. I love ping pong. Yeah, that's my sort of like if I wasn't playing basketball, I'd just play ping pong. I grew up overseas, um, uh, lived in four or five different countries growing up uh, as a son of a dip U.S. diplomat. I'm KJ's favorite coach of all time. He doesn't really like to um, go there or publicize <laughs> it, but when he's keeping it 100, he would probably tell you that. And that'll do it from BYU. Thank you for watching WCC All Access. And now we leave you with some of the best plays from the last month of action around the West Coast Conference. See you next time. Lyman probably looking to cross it again here. Does. It's up high and finds the corner of the net. 
Rachel Lyman crossing it far post and goes ahead and scores it herself. I'm not sure if she was trying to do that or not. Drum roll. <gasps> yes! And a goal for St. Mary's. And the St. Mary's wins. Mason, late to the field. She fires away with the right hand and she scores! Summer Mason, length of the field counter for San Diego. From the shores of the Pacific to the mountains of Utah, in the classroom, in the community, and on the fields of play, we give back. We lead by example. We represent.